And we are back. Welcome to my predictions for Premier League Game Week 4. And a happy deadline day to everyone as well. Let me know down in the comments all of your thoughts on this season's transfer window. Has your team had a good or bad window? As I say, let me know down in the comments. And let's look ahead to what is going to be another enthralling weekend of Premier League action. But before we do, if you've not done so already, please do consider dropping a like on the video and subscribing to the channel if you are new around here. Let's get into all of this weekend's action. And we kick off for the second week running with Luton Town on a Friday night. This time, finally making their home debut in the Premier League. And they're up against West Ham, who have made a phenomenal start to the season. Capped off by that incredible win away at Brighton last week that not many people, including myself, certainly did not predict. So it makes it a very interesting one. Coming into the season, everyone was saying, how hard is it going to be for teams to travel to Kenilworth Road and get a result? Well, I think West Ham are one of the teams that you'd probably fancy to get a result. The whole point of Kenilworth Road is to be a hostile environment, make the game very, very physical and difficult for the opposition in that regard. But West Ham are arguably the most physical team in the Premier League, but they've also brought in some very quality ball players as well, none more so than James Ward-Prowse, who really has stepped up in his first two West Ham games. And I just had to look at the game as a whole and think, I don't think Luton's midfield has quite got the capability of getting a hold of West Ham's midfield. And I can really see that being the deciding factor tonight between the two teams. I'm going to go for 2-1 to West Ham. Obviously, as a partial Luton fan, you can see the flag in the background and Dave's hat, of course. I would love to see Luton get a result tonight, but I think the way Luton have started and the way West Ham have started this season, I think this is West Ham's game to throw away. On to Saturday, and we start with another of the promoted sides in Sheffield United taking on Everton. Two sides who, arguably, at the game week four stage, it's a must-win game for both teams right now. Everton, of course, have brought in a new big money striker in Beto. He scored on debut in the Carabao Cup earlier this week. Sheffield United, on the other hand, had a fantastic, I would say, performance against Manchester City. Very unlucky, again, arguably, not to get the draw after resisting for so long. When City did score, they got the equaliser, but sadly switched off for those two minutes after getting the equaliser, and City did win 2-1. But to hold Manchester City for that long is an achievement, and if they can hold City that long, then they can hold an Everton side that have really not looked too threatening going forward all season. I think they can hold them out for an entire 90 minutes. And I'm going to go for 1-0 to Sheffield United in Saturday's early kickoff. On to the three o'clocks then. And we start with Brentford up against Bournemouth. I think this is a game where Brentford definitely should be winning this game. Bournemouth, I think, have had a very good start to the season. Although the actual results themselves haven't quite reflected it so far. And I'm going to go for something along those lines again today. I'm going to go for 2-0 to Brentford. I could definitely see Bournemouth getting at least a goal in this game. But I think Brentford have just sort of got their shape and their style of play sorted in the last couple of weeks. And I expect them to get the result in this one. On to Burnley up against Tottenham. And as we've already spoken about with the other two promoted sides, all three promoted sides as it stands right now are all on zero points. And as Vincent Company has been saying this week, the jump from the Championship to the Premier League is arguably the hardest jump in world football right now. So I don't think this is a game that Burnley have a realistic chance of winning. I think Tottenham have done very well so far this season. They look to have their style of play sorted. They could probably do with scoring a couple more goals, but I think they're sort of starting to share the goals around the team. Everyone was asking about how could they fill Harry Kane's boots. Well, the best way of doing it is to start spreading the goals around the team more. I think they've started doing that pretty well. And I expect them to do the same in this game as well as I go for a 3-1 win to Tottenham. I don't think they'll get the clean sheet. I think Burnley have enough quality to get at least a goal and Tottenham's defence hasn't looked the best so far of this season. So I'm going to go for 3-1 to Spurs. Next up, it is Chelsea and Nottingham Forest. Two sides again who have made mixed starts to the season. I think both teams on the field performances have been pretty good. But in terms of scoring goals, it hasn't been their absolute best. Obviously, Forest got a two-goal lead against Man United last week and threw it away. Chelsea finally got their goal-scoring boots sorted against Luton Town last week. But again, as we've already mentioned, Luton's defence has probably been the worst so far in the Premier League this season. So it makes it an interesting one to call. I think Chelsea are definitely going to look to expand on that performance against Luton last time out. Forest, who are a dangerous team, who are still trying to figure it out themselves, have made another, I think it's five signings this week already. And there are still rumours about potential more incomings 
today on deadline day. So who knows what sort of team they're going to put out. I think Chelsea are going to get the result. I'm going to go for 3-1 yet again, this time in favour of the home side. On to Manchester City and Fulham, the final of the three o'clock kickoffs this week. And again, given the fact that City did struggle against Sheffield United last week, and given the fact that Fulham were able to get a 2-2 draw with Arsenal with 10 men, that is a hell of an achievement for them. The only reason I'm going to go for a heavy scoreline in Manchester City's favour, as I put the score on now as 4-1, is the rumours surrounding João Paulinho. Now, obviously, he made a huge difference coming back into the side for Fulham against Arsenal last week, including, of course, scoring the equaliser with two minutes to go. Now, it looks like he could be on his way to Bayern Munich for a substantial fee. Could be in the region of 50 to up to £80 million pounds they're looking at the likes of Hoybierg, Scott McTominay and a couple of others to come in and replace him. But to immediately come into that team and make the same sort of impact that Paulinho would do, I just don't see that happening this weekend. And it's the worst possible opponent to be coming up against when you're losing arguably your most influential midfielder. So I think I have to go for a heavy Manchester City win if Paulinho is missing. The final game on Saturday, the evening game this week, is Brighton against Newcastle. Two sides looking to bounce back from... Shock disappointments, I would say. Brighton, no one, I said, no one expected Brighton to lose to West Ham, and they did quite comfortably, despite actually having a lot more chances than West Ham. There's something like three times as many chances as West Ham did, but unfortunately for Brighton, it was West Ham who were more clinical. On the flip side, Newcastle with the lead and with the man advantage against Liverpool, throwing away the lead thanks to two phenomenal finishes from Darwin Nunez. So, very, very tough one to call. I think Newcastle probably haven't quite made the start to the season they would have been hoping for. Brighton, I think, are on track, despite the fact they did lose to West Ham last week. I can't really split the two teams right now. I think it's going to be a very open game. I think you're going to see a lot of goals at both ends of the pitch. And I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw in that one. On to Sunday, and we kick off with Crystal Palace and Wolverhampton Wanderers. I think Crystal Palace has made a good start to the season. I think Wolves have made an average start to the season. Obviously, getting that late winner against Everton last week was huge for them. But again, they've not really looked the most threatening side so far this season. I don't think they've got what it takes to score a goal against Crystal Palace, who are a very, very resilient defence under Roy Hodgson. And I'm going to go for a 2-0 win to Crystal Palace to fully justify all of the things I have just said. Whilst that game is going on, Liverpool will be playing Aston Villa since Aston Villa played in the Europa Conference League last night, beating Hibernian 3-0 for an 8-0 overall aggregate scoreline. So that's why this game is being played on Sunday. But sadly for Liverpool and Aston Villa fans, this game will not be televised because of that. Again, I think this is a really, really tight one to call. I think Liverpool have been relatively disappointing so far this season. But they've got the results, and that's obviously the way that you want to be when you're not playing well, is to still pick up results. But at the same time, I think Aston Villa, other than that heavy defeat to Newcastle in the opening game, have shown what they're capable of with loads and loads of goals in their respective fixtures since that game. So I think we're going to in for a very, very open game, a very high-scoring game. But I just think, like I say, given the way that the season has started for these two sides, I just think Liverpool are going to edge it. And I'm going to go for a 3-2 win to Liverpool at Anfield on Sunday. Finally then, we come to what is considered the main event of the weekend, which is, of course, the final game of Sunday. It is Arsenal and Manchester United at the Emirates. Two sides that, again, have made, I would say, poor starts to their season. No one really thought Arsenal should be drawing at home to Fulham. They almost blew it at home to Nottingham Forest earlier on in the season as well. Manchester United, of course, very publicly criticised for their performances so far this season, none more so than myself for the way that we've played. Do I think we're realistically going to go to the Emirates and get a result? I was very confident last year, if you don't remember, with me saying something along the lines of we'd smash Arsenal at the Emirates last year and we'd still lost that game. We have since lost Luke Shaw through injury. We've lost Rafael Varane through injury. We've signed Sergio Reguilón on loan. Whether or not he's going to play in this game remains to be seen at the moment. It's not looking good for Manchester United at the moment. I think certainly today new signings need to come in, especially that Sofian Amrabat deal. And I would love to see him play against Arsenal on Sunday. But as the things stand right now, I just think the way our midfield has looked so, so dodgy and how talented Arsenal's midfield is, I think that's where this game is going to be won. And I think Arsenal will end up taking it. And I'm going to go for a 3-1 win to Arsenal in that one, sadly. I hope I'm wrong. 
But I think the way things have started this season, I think Arsenal have to be the strong favourites going into this one. And sadly for me, even though I wanted four points or six points from the two opening away games, I'm predicting us to end with none. Let me know all of your comments down. Sorry, let me know all of your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching as always. And one final reminder again, if you haven't done so already, to drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the content coming your way. Certainly in these next couple of days, I'll do a whole bunch of reactions to transfer deadline day signings. And of course, the Arsenal-Manchester United game. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you very soon.